Welcome to another edition of the Gold Nose Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The, more, the majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Um, Jarvis Brownlee, man. Um, I just wish him well in his future endeavors. Um, I know this is about a week after he got in the portal and he's gone, but, you know, it's, it's easy to sit here and talk crazy about him, but, you know, I'm not going to do that. Um, like I said, I just hope wherever he goes, he does well, he goes to the league and, you know, he does well in the league. Um, you know, I think he, he does have a talent. Um, I just don't think he's a cover corner. I think he's more of a strong safety type of guy. Um, that's that's what I feel. I think he's more of a strong safety. And um, pretty, pretty fast. Pretty athletic, long arms, and um, I think he would do well as a, as a strong safety in the league. Um, so, um, not surprised that he left. Um, I just think that with some of the cornerback talent that you have on this roster, I just I didn't see a way, a path for him starting this year. I just. I don't I just didn't see how this coaching staff could justify marching him out there. So, um like I said, wherever he goes, wherever he plays, I hope he does well. I hope he gets drafted. I hope he goes to the league and has a great career. Um You know, I really don't get into the coaching stuff and administrative stuff cuz I, I really don't care about none of that. My my thing is you bring in those guys to develop players. Whatever you know, personnel you bring as far as coaching staff, administrative staff, it all ties back into one thing. We are here to develop these players to win games. That's that's the bottom line. So when we get a guy, when we lose a guy, you know, it's next man up. And you know, it's nice to see that uh, you know they're they're investing in Florida State football. Um, I don't know if I said anything about the locker room last week, but I mean, it's it's a nice story, um, and it's it's a nice thing for the players. So, you know, I don't have a problem with it at all, but. I would much rather them be celebrating a great season than, you know, making videos about the locker room. But I guess that's just me being the uh, obnoxious Florida State fan that I am. Um, You know, you know, I say this every week, man, but. To me, football is just a simple game. You know, we, I just think that we as fans, the coaches, and this is really in high school, college, and pro, we make it complicated. Okay? You know, the key to winning football games is offensive and defensive line play. And even when we were in our heyday, per se, um, you know, we had great defensive line play and we had okay offensive line play. It was it was a lot better than what we've had the last four or five years. So we just got to get back to that. Um, you know, I've seen some stuff where some guys are saying that Tate Rotomaker, Rotomaker, however you say his name, is, is improving. That's that's nice to see. Um, 
that's really nice to see. Um, he's a big guy, 6'4", over 200 pounds. I mean, we know he's got a cannon for an arm. And, uh, you know, if Jordan Travis doesn't come back next season, but I think he is going to come back. You know, I would love to see that guy, you know, with, with a full knowledge of the offense and confidence and just see what he can do. Um, he was thrown into the fire his true freshman year, and, you know, it's kind of, and it was a COVID year, so it's just kind of hard to respond during something like that. Um, the, uh, another position I wanted to talk about was, uh, linebacker um i think i think kaylin deloach is on the verge of being a, a star man i mean he 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 improved tremendously last season but that i i really think that was because of the defensive line play so i'm i'm real hesitant to really you know, toot, toot his horn really loud. I think that, you know, I got to see how he plays this year. You know, without Jermaine Johnson, without Kier Thomas. And we'll see, you know, if that, if last year was, you know, the, 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 the makings of a great player or was it just a flash in the pan? But, I mean, I like what I saw. I think he, I think he's going to keep improving, man. And, you know, if he has a great season, he's probably gone. He's probably gone, man. Undersized linebacker. But, I mean, if you can play, you can play. Really doesn't matter about size. Um, uh, Batoon. Batoon is a starter. Deloach is a starter. So I don't know who the other guy is. Um, I seen some stuff on YouTube where your boy Steven Dix was struggling in tackling drills. So it's just like, come on, man. You this big, you know, humongous guy and you can't tackle. So... I don't know. And I, I like the fact that Lundy is down on weight. I think I talked about this last week. but And I would like to see them move Amari Gaynor to pass rusher on the edge. Um, I mean, DB, man, it's just an overload at DB. I don't even know who they're going to put out there as starters. So I'm going to be very interested to see that. And, uh. I would assume that either Cooper or Knowles are going to be one of the starters. Then I could see the dude, uh, the, the uh, I forget where, I forget his name. I think he's from LSU transfer or him or uh, McCall challenging for the other spot. I'm, I think pretty much uh, Jammy at strong safety and uh, your boy uh, number 27 are the safeties. Um, and that's a good safety tandem right there. Um, and I'm, y'all, if you ever listen to this ep- this podcast, man, I'm bad with names. I'm sorry. I just can't memorize the whole roster. Um, I, I, I'm i sorry. I just can't do it. I've tried to. <laughs> I've tried to memorize the whole roster. I just can't do it, man. Um, so I think the defense is going to be really good. I think the defense is going to be really good. I don't see no drop off on the defense. Offensively. 
Again, can we make the strides on the offensive line? Is really what I'm looking at. That's the key to this team having a successful season. Is the offensive line play. And I've gone into how I feel about the offensive line many, 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 many times. So I just hope that uh they can they can bring it together, man. I, I hope that Alex Atkins can find the five best guys at each position, not just five guys that that don't know the position. Find the best guy at each position and put him on the field. But I got to see what Lloyd Willis can do, man. This will be his fourth year on campus. I got to see what he can do. Put him out there against some good competition. So... You know, offensive line is really controlling everything, in my opinion. And I think that's going to determine if we have a successful season or not. Or not. Um, I just can't. I mean, it's it's such a long time between the end of the season and the start of the next season. Um, it, it's just. I don't know. I I think when I first got into football, I was more into the NFL. I felt like when I was a kid, the football was pretty much in its golden age. Um, you know, as I've gotten older, the game has gotten a little bit more politically correct, where... You know, you can't really celebrate. You can't really hit people. And with with that, I've pretty much gone over to college football where there's a little bit more emotion. You can't really celebrate in college anymore. But and I say that to say this, I'm, I'm slowly becoming more of a Florida State fan than a San Francisco 49ers fan. It's always been like a dead tie, but just just how the NFL is now. Um, and I understand player safety, but it's a dangerous game. I think the more that you try to police the game, make the game safer, the more I think the more rules you put in place, you actually make it more dangerous. Because I feel like this, if two well-conditioned athletes go, you know, form tackle, let's just say a defensive player and an offensive player going basically, as we used to say back in the day, head up, with your head up, you know, the better conditioned athlete is going to win. And that's generally how it goes. When, when, when you accelerate on contact, usually nobody gets hurt. Usually. And I just think the more that you try to make the game safer, defensive players think before they hit, they get hurt. So, um, I don't know. I still love the game. I still love watching. I love being around it. Um. So that's that's probably never going to change. Um, but I just wish it was some sort of balance between old school and new school. And um, I don't think we're ever going to get there. I think it's just, it's so, I mean, just society in general is soft right now. Like, <laughs> I mean, especially like on social media. I mean, the slightest little thing will get you banned for 30 days on your favorite, you know, social media app. So I just try to, I just try to stay low and keep moving, man. And, you know, I sports reflect society. And society is getting soft. Sports are going to get soft. Like, 
if you have a big hit in college football, it's going to be reviewed to see if it was targeting. Like, it could just be a perfect form tackle, face mask, and chest. And if the referee feels like you hit him too hard, flag on the play, thrown out the game, you're going to miss the next game. I I don't like that. Um, I feel like if it's a perfectly formed tackle, and I, I, I don't like th- that they eliminated the blind side hit. Like, I was, you know, when I played football, I was always taught to keep your head on the swivel. Don't get caught counting your change. So you, you already know if you just running, trying to tackle a guy, hey, you might get blindsided. I can say I've never been blindsided because I always was looking around <laughs> when I was running, chasing the guy. So I don't know how I got off on this tangent about football fundamentals, but I, you know, I, I think there's going to be a lot more purging on this roster. You know, I, like I said, I'm not going to bag on Brownlee, man, but I just think with the talent that you have at that position, you really couldn't justify to the fan base him starting. I'm not going to say he couldn't be on this team, but I just don't see how I, I couldn't see how you kept putting him out there last year. Knowles and Cooper were clearly better players and they should have been the starting corners. They clearly were playing better than Brownlee. And, you know, I don't know. Um, just just like I, I can't figure out for the life of me why you kept sending Mackenzie Milton out there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm not gonna have any I he he had I give him the Notre Dame game. I say, okay, he looked halfway decent in the Notre Dame game. But the following game after that, come on man. He didn't look good. And Really, no game that he played in did he look good. And you lost Chubba Purdy. I, worst come to worst, I'm going to put Purdy out there because he's a better athlete. I think Purdy gave you a better chance to win than Mackenzie Milton. I don't care what you what he was doing in practice, okay? Just he could take off and run. Mackenzie Milton couldn't do that on that leg. So I say that to say this. I just hope you don't go into this season with these blind allegiances to certain players. If they are stinking it up on the field, get them off the field. And I just think that's that's just one of the processes that this coaching staff is going to have to go through is just not blindly just sticking with guys. Um, Early on in the podcast, I was talking about uh, number 27, and I I forgot his name at that moment, Akeem Dent and Jamie Robinson. I think... I think they have a chance to be one of the better safety tandems in the nation next season. And uh, I think Cooper and Knowles, with the departure of Brownlee, are pretty much the leaders in the clubhouse in terms of being the starters at corner. I think, uh, I mean, you just got an abundance of talent there. Um so, I mean, if they've recruited any position well, it's been a uh, defensive back. Um, so, I mean, hopefully that can be a strength for this team. Uh, but, you know, great defensive back play and the pass rush pretty much go hand in hand. So, um, you know, Verse, McClendon, um and all those other guys on the defensive line, um, you know, they got to get to the quarterback. So I'm just hoping that we can, you know, be better than last season. Not as good, but better. So uh, that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's available on YouTube. It's available on all podcast platforms. Uh, Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening. Go Knowles.